All right, we have uh, no minutes for approval. A short turnaround since our last meeting. Go right into my uh, greetings. And um, I was going to sing a uh, version of a Bengals song, uh, just, just another messy Monday, but I'll stay away from doing that. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for all for coming out on this uh, nasty evening. And uh, it's, this is the biggest crowd we've ever had for a budget hearing. So it's great to <laughs> thank you so much. Um, but sp speaking of the weather, I do want to, before I get to my other comments, want to uh, thank DPW, police, fire, electric personnel for their tireless effort through the uh, storms that we've had this last couple of weeks, just a wave after wave, and uh, keeping Madison great and keeping Madison safe out there. I want to welcome freeholder Doug Cabana. Thank you for joining us today. And a note, one of our regulars is usually sitting right in the front row, Louise Patterson, will be undergoing surgery tomorrow. And so she is uh, with her daughter right now, getting ready. So uh, our, please uh, keep Louise in your prayers and thoughts and for a successful surgery and a complete recovery and return to the front row here. Last week I attended the annual mayor's legislative uh, session in Trenton, which is always very interesting. There was a very uh, spirited uh, discussion on the Transportation Trust Fund, which you've heard me mention a couple of times, and promises that they will work it out before uh, we have no money left to maintain our roads. Also a spirited discussion about uh, pension reform, trying to take care, solve that problem, and also uh, economic recovery, which... Um, I think one and three are very tied together. No matter what you do, if you can't get people from point A to point B, the, economic, the economy will not recover in the state. A um, couple of things for your calendar. The Pilgrim Pipeline Community Meeting we put together is going to be February 25th, 7 p.m. at Madison High School. We have our legislative uh, delegation from Trenton will be there, and we've invited uh, residents from Chatham Borough, Township, Florham Park, East Hanover, Harding, and of course Madison. So please join us so we can hear about the Pilgrim Pipeline and what, is, what steps are being taken. And of course, our second annual um, Bolathon at um, Madison Plaza Lanes in honor in, to support the Union Beach camp effort. Uh, this is now the um, third year of sending children to camp. There are still families in Union Beach that are living in temporary uh, shelters, trailers, and we're still waiting for the homes to be rebuilt. So an opportunity for some level of normalcy by sending their children to camp. So please join us. That's going to be March 26th at 5 p.m. And all the proceeds will go to the, the camp program. And um, before I uh, talk to our employee of the month, I also want to mention a nice little letter from uh, Cablevision announcing our um, franchise fees for this year. And here it is. The... Uh, their income in, New, in Madison was $3.3 million, and so we received a check of $118,000 from uh, Cablevision. So, that's, so when you turn on the TV, you are helping Madison. Just Cablevision. Our employee of the month for February is James Blair of the Madison Fire Department. Chief. Firefighter Blair assisted a resident whose home was flooded when a hot water valve broke, flooding both the kitchen and basement. His assistance in shutting off the water as well as completing the cleanup was greatly appreciated by the resident. So thank you, James, and we'll be, uh, you'll see his name at the front door, if not already. In a few minutes, we're going to be uh, passing a few resolutions and then swearing in our new officers. I just want to remind people afterwards, this is a, a time of celebration, but we have to get through our um, meeting here. I'll also remind you, you're welcome to stay for the budget hearing, so you don't have to leave. But if you do leave, uh, the this conversations kind of echo through this beautiful building, and so you have to kind of keep the uh, conversations quiet, move on downstairs as quickly as possible, and even down there, um, we'll, we'll be hearing you up there. So celebrate, but celebrate quietly. All right, we have five resolutions to uh, pass. Let me... Uh, Read them by abbreviated title, Resolu Resolution 62, 2015, appointing Julian Morales to the position of police officer. Resolution 63, 2015, appointing Joseph DiRocco to position of police officer. Resolution 64, 2016, appointing Kevin Mah Mahefka to police officer. 
Resolution 65, 2015, appointing Spiro Malonis to a police officer. Resolution 66, re appointing Patrick Sherfacci to police officer. May I have a motion on those five? May I? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. <clears throat> May I have Julian Morales up here, please? I think all the microphones are off. <coughs> yep. we'll get... Chief, your mother is here. Come on up. And John Grant, please come up here. John Grant is coming up here to uh, pin the badge, and this is a kind of representation of um, the type of family atmosphere we have in uh, Madison because we are one great family. So we have a mother and a representative from uh, Julian CJ's family from a few years ago, correct? <laughs> Left hand of the Bible, raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. I do you solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. I will faithfully. I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties of. All the duties of. Police officer for the borough of Madison. Police officer for the borough of Madison. For the best of my ability. For the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. Further solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. To the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. And I mean, they tune from what F troop. <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations. Joseph DiRocco, and I think mother and father, please come on up. I state your name. 
I, Joseph Duraco, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform, all the duties of, all the duties of, police officer for the borough of Madison, police officer for the borough of Madison, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear, I further the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the United uh, State of New Jersey. <laughs> And it will bear true faith and allegiance. And will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Put him right there. Kevin Moore Hepka and mother and father, please come up. I start to state your name. Hi, Kevin Moore Hepka. Do I solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties of. All the duties of. Police officer for the borough of Madison. Police officer for the borough of Madison. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. Further solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. The Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established. United States and in this state and in this state under the authority of the people the authority of the people so help me God so help me God congratulations Thanks, sir. Spiro Molonas. Mother and Miss. George's mother, welcome. And George, please come on up. George, read us. Oh, yep, he's 
right hand, left hand in the Bible. There we go. I state your name. I swear, Malonis. Do solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That will faithfully. Faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. Justly perform. All, all the duties of. All the duties of. Police officer for the borough of Madison. Police officer for the borough of Madison. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. Further solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. Support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance. Bear fair, truth, faith, and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. The governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And Patrick Strapacci, and your, your mother, please, and Lauren also, please come on up. I state your name. I, Patrick Strapacci. Do, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That will faithfully. That will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties of. All the duties of. Police officer for the borough of Madison. Police officer for the borough of Madison. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. Further solemnly swear. That I support the Constitution of the United States. That I support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance. I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Again, you are welcome to stay for the budget. Uh, you don't want to do that. No. Nice meeting you. Very well. Yes. You'll enjoy it. Thank you. 
Congratulations, all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do have door prizes for those that stay to the end. <laughs> he gave away all the roses for you. Yep. That's, yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. They came in knowing what's going on. <laughs> the volume is good enough? You can hear us in the back? Okay. Thank you. 10% difference. Okay, thanks. The only thing I would want to know is when he had board hair. Yeah. Apparently he's a local guy. He just wanted to come back. Yeah. Obviously with the swearing in with five officers, this is a big day for Madison, and uh, we've had quite a few retire recently, so this is bringing strength back to our um, police force. And let's move on to reports from committees. Community Affairs, Ms. Bally. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the DDC and the Madison Area YMCA are teaming up to host the first annual Madison Downtown Scavenger Hunt on Saturday, March 21st. The event will support Downtown Madison and benefit the Madison Area YMCA's Community Mental Health Initiative. The link for registration forms can be found on the DDC's webpage on the Rosenet. And this year's Taste of Madison will be held on Monday, March 30th at the Park Avenue Club. They are running a Valentine's Day ticket special, two VIP tickets for $150. Regularly, they're each uh, $100. This is a limited offer. The tickets must be purchased in person at Gary's Wine and Marketplace between February 12th and 16th to qualify. And this event is organized through a partnership between the DDC, the Chamber of Commerce, and Rotary Club of Madison. And it's a great evening for, to showcase the Madison's um, dining establishments. And from the seniors, um, Not Your Daughter's Yoga began Tuesday, February 3rd. Um, this is a series of classes being offered by Donna uh, Sue Doughton. It's from 11.30 to 12.30, and the cost is $45 uh, for the nine sessions. And the Senior Center is also offering open mahjong every Tuesday at 1.15 p.m. And uh, the seniors are all also um, offering the 2014 tax return assistance by appointment every Wednesday, February 11th through April 15th. Sessions are at 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 12.30 Call 973-593-3095 to schedule an appointment. And another uh, item that they have that is new this year, if you have questions or concerns related to participation in the Affordable Care Act and how it affects your taxes, tax counselors will be available on Wednesday, February 4th from 9.30 to 11 a.m., Changes in the tax law regarding the ACA and health insurance exchanges can be confusing, so take advantage of the opportunity to speak with someone about the specific issues. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public safety, Mr. Cannonello. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, so as everyone just witnessed, we swore in five new officers uh, today, which was a big day for the police department, gets us back up to strength. Um, on behalf of the... Uh, uh, Fire Department and uh, Chief DeRosa, uh, we ask, uh, the, we're asking the public uh, for their assistance in clearing fire hydrants after every significant snowstorm. It would be a tremendous help to the department and to the community. Uh, there's an ongoing problem that is easily and inexpensively solved with the public's help. There are approximately 800 hydrants in town. Uh, the Fire Department needs these uh, hydrants because they can only bring about 500 gallons of water with them to a fire. 
Uh, we ask that you clear three feet around the hydrant and provide a three-foot three path to the street. Valuable time is lost and a firefighter's energy is wasted clearing a hydrant during an emergency. A fire hydrant that is located within 800 feet of your home is your hydrant. Approximately 165 hydrants were cleared last week by, per, by department personnel. We're asking uh, each Madison resident or group of residents to adopt a hydrant in your neighborhood. Uh, time is so important uh, at the scene of a fire and clearing uh, your hydrant after a snowstorm will help make a positive difference if, God forbid, there is a fire in your home or neighborhood. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Just to reinforce that, I did read recently in Massachusetts of a fire. Uh, the building was a total loss, and one of the things cited was the time lost trying to uh, dig out the fire hydrant. So thank you for delivering that message. Utilities, Ms. Vitale. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, report from uh, the Electric Department and Mike Piano. Uh, they're performing their routine maintenance on their buck bucket and digger trucks that they started a few weeks ago. And they did receive a new digger, Derek, on February 4th, uh, operated for acceptance and began installing the tools and materials and the reflective um, safety tape. So that's going to be off and running very soon. Um, they removed a historical uh, lamppost from Winhurst uh, Drive, which was stru struck by a snowplow. And Mike has met with a design engineer to discuss possible generation generator locations in Public Works Yard, and he provided the engineer with historical substation data. Um, Water Department um, is always busy. They do their usual markouts uh, for homeowners and contractors, uh, meter replacements. Um, we're having problems and they're having to shut off service for customers' frozen pipes and whatever. There was another six inch main break at 50 uh, Shady Long Drive due to the zero degree weather. Um, and of course, then they assist the road department uh, with snow plowing and snow removal. Uh, had to repair water service on Westerly Avenue and they had to replace old PVC piping to chlorinator at well, uh, a well treatment plant. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Finance Borough Clerk, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, tonight is the beginning of the formal budget process. Tonight we're going to hear from the department heads that include the police, fire, DPW, engineering, and the Board of Health. On February 18th, we're going to hear from utilities. We're also going to talk about the five-year capital plan. On February 23rd will be the final budget review, and on March 9th will be the introduction of the budget. <laughs> The preliminary budget this year is focused on maintaining all current services and strengthening public safety by adding personnel to the police and fire departments, as you witnessed tonight. This draft that was prepared by the staff, and I'm going to emphasize, is a work in progress that currently calls for a 1.5% increase in the municipal tax rate. Throughout this process, we will be striving to either meet or work toward the guidelines and suggestions presented by our strategic planning committees. The budget again provides funding for the targeted electric rebate program, which resulted in an 11% reduction in the electric bills for those eligible applicants in 2014. A further discussion of an across-the-board decrease in electric rates for all customers will take place as part of the utility discussion at the February 18th budget hearing. The budget projects investing $3 million in the capital budget to fix our roads and utility infrastructure. Last year, $1.8 million of our capital budget was funded by the sale of borough property and fund balance. We have neither this year and yet are still able to budget $3 million to the capital program, and that's thanks to our electric surplus. And finally, we encourage participation by our residents and encourage their comments and suggestions. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Health, Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, Madison Health Department, under the uh, <coughs> uh, somewhat amusing title of Be Wise, Get Immunized, wants to remind you of something that's really quite important, which is, as I think we're all aware, measles has reappeared. And it can be easily prevented 
by an inoculation which has for some reason turned out to be controversial in the last several years. Um, this is a very serious disease. We always think of it as a childhood disease, not so consequential. That isn't the case at all. It can be very harmful, certainly to infants, but it can also be harmful to pregnant women as well as people who have compromised immune problems. I'll just parenthetically tell you that um, I recently asked a doctor if he felt that people of my generation needed to be immunized because when we were kids, this immunization was not available. It was invented after. And he said, every one of your generation has been exposed, so there's no issue. You are immunized. It is that pervasive. <coughs> now, the good news is that thanks to our nursing staff and their immunization audits, we know that uh, only about 1% of the youth in our uh, schools is not immunized, typically because of either a medical issue or a religious exemption. But, but you can't rest assured on that fact, that it's such a small number that have not been immunized. So again, I can't emphasize it enough. If we do one thing beneficial for you tonight, and you know someone who needs to be immunized, you get them to do it, you've done a great thing. The other, uh, the other thing I want to mention is, if you look at the front of this room and what we're wearing, this is um, not in, you will notice a lot of red. <laughs> this is not for Valentine's Day. This is something much more consequential. February is known as the Go Red for Women Month. And what that uh, pertains to is the fact that women are um, often the victims of heart disease and stroke. We usually think of it as a male disease, not at all the case. It's very pervasive among our female population. Go Red is, as you might expect, an acronym. And as much as I really don't like doing this, I think it's important enough to just tell you what it stands for. So the G is forget your numbers. You should know what your cholesterol, blood pressure, and glucose is. The O is for own your lifestyle. Stop smoking, lose weight, be physically active, eat healthy. The R is for raise your voice, advocate for more women-related research and education. E is for educate your family, make healthy food choices for you and your family. And finally, D is for donate. <coughs> Show your support with a donation of time or money. Thank you. I apologize for our New York City uh, council members who uh, had already left for the day when they got the message, but you are sitting in red chairs, so uh, you are <coughs> supporting the club. And uh, Public Works Engineering, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first from the Engineering Department, uh, plans and specifications for the Ridgedale Ave reconstruction project will be submitted to the New Jersey Department of Transportation for review this week. The preliminary plans that have been discussed, the, I'm sorry, these preliminary plans have been discussed with the Board of Ed and the Bottle Hill District Owners Association. In the near future, an informal public hearing will be scheduled so the public can also provide feedback. The project has received a state grant and we anticipate bidding it out this spring with construction being performed over the summer. The mill and overlay maintenance program is subject to capital funding during the budget discussions. It may include repaving of Morris, Danforth, Sherwood, Longwood, Court, Parkside, Candlewood, Fox Chase, and or Union. The surveying of Central Ave has been authorized uh, to finalize a proposal for road improvements. Once surveying is complete, the proposal can be finalized and sent to the county for approval. Additional surveying proposals have been received for reconstruction work at Lawanica Terrace, Crescent Ave, Kinney and West Streets, Cross Street and Cottage Place. And finally, the 2015 um, sorry, capital improvement budget proposals are being assembled. They are generally consistent with our five and 20 year capital plans. Uh, for the library, the HVA system, ceiling and lighting repairs will be rebid this spring once the consultant has modified its plans. Uh, the complete streets committee uh, have been, meetings have been proposed for February, May, August, and November. Uh, historic preservation, a grant funding application will be submitted to the County of Morris for historic preservation of the unoccupied portion of the East Wing of Hartley Dodge Memorial. And finally, from the Department of Public Works, I'll just echo what you said earlier today. They've been doing a great job of clearing the snow, spreading salt on streets during the winter storms that we've had on an almost weekly basis. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <coughs> Communications and petitions. Uh, none received, Mayor.
All right, this is our first of two invitations uh, for discussions for members in the audience. You may come up and comment on items on our agenda discussion or resolutions that are listed on the consent agenda. Uh, ordinances have a hearing. There are no hearings today, but you'll be able to comment on ordinances at our next meeting. The items for discussion include a letter of intent for uh, Hartley Dodge Memorial Grant application to Morris County Historic uh, Preservation Trust Fund, uh, Oak Court parking restrictions, and the 2015 municipal budget discussion. And as I mentioned, any of the items that uh, are listed on the uh, resolutions that are on the board. Anyone wishing to comment on those items, please step forward, state your name, your address, and the item on the agenda that you are commenting on. <coughs> Michael. Uh, Mike Soriano, uh, 230 Woodland Road. Um, just a couple of comments. Excuse me? Okay. Uh, just a uh, couple of comments on the municipal budget as it relates to the capital budgets that were presented uh, by Jim Burnett at the last meeting. Um, and this is mainly uh, related to the electrical, uh, electric and water utility. Uh, as Jim presented, uh, the chart showed capital for the electric utility for 2015 at $415,000 and for the water utility at $315,000. Uh, the numbers for the utilities were about the same as the straight line method presented by the utility committee in their presentation to the council. But it is much less than the remaining useful life method, which shows the annual capital for the electric utility needs of $1.6 million and for the water utility of $3.2 million. Uh, I'd like to quote one thing from the electric, uh, from the utility committee report, which says that the utility, utility committee report states that continued spending at just the straight line level is inconsistent with seeking to maintain reliability. The council should explore at what level it could commit to escrowing for future spending, and that is right from the uh, utility committee report. Um, all the reports have been given uh, at this point, and I believe that the borough administration and the council should, become, should begin real strategic planning. Uh, tough questions should be, uh, need to be addressed by the council. Are we spending enough on the electric and water utilities to maintain reliability. If we spend more to maintain the reliability of the utilities, can the utilities afford to transfer as much to the borough to be used as revenue in the budget? And again, this year I see a significant increase in what was just handed out by Mr. Cody, uh, a significant increase from a year ago. Can the electric utility afford to lower electric rates if it needs to spend more on capital? Should the water utility raise rates to help pay for its capital needs? And what trade-offs need to be addressed in the borough budget to be able to afford the needed capital spending? The trade-offs include <coughs> services provided and property taxes to be raised. I would hope that the administration and the council have some real strategic planning sessions before locking in on the 2015 budget. I would hope that the council provides the public with answers to the above questions when it presents their recommended 2015 budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. A lot of food for thought for us. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone else wishing to comment on items on the discussion agenda or resolutions? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And on to number 13, agenda discussions. Letter of intent for HDM grant application. Austri. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, um, it's probably time to um, look at the east wing of Hartley Dodge Memorial. We have an opportunity to partner with the Historical Society 
and the Hartley Dodge Memorial Foundation to go for some grants from the county. Um, this is a perfect example of, of us using a little bit of our <coughs> preservation uh, trust fund money to um, leverage dollars from the county. The first step is to um, you know, do this dec declaration of intent. It gets us in the line for the next steps, which would be to de you develop the plans, then you've got to build and renovate and restore, and you can get money each step of the way. So um, I recommend that we do this. Questions, comments? Okay, so this is resolution 69 that is on our consent agenda. So we can move forward to this. Thank you, and thank you for the work on that. Okay, Oak Court parking restrictions. Bob Vogel and Good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, the Oak Court uh, Ordinance uh, Amendment proposal that you have in front of you responds to a, a number of meetings that we held with residents uh, over the last year. It responded to a uh, issue where uh, a fairly narrow road in the borough of Madison has had problems with on-street parking and access uh, from buses and uh, other uh, large uh, vehicles. and. Uh, uh, we are trying to respond to the residents in a comprehensive way, and one of those ways is to propose a uh, restriction on parking on one side of the street um, in, in certain areas and uh, do a better job signing uh, the street with regards to parking and doing some additional striping as well. The only complicated part of this is uh, under DOT rules, uh, since it one of the sections of road is not a self-contained street. We also have to get the cooperation of Morris Township in writing before we submit all these things and have it <coughs> finalized down to the state of New Jersey. Uh, but this at least gets the ball rolling. And so uh, it, uh, I believe uh, the chief is here as well to echo uh, the, uh, the, uh, the proposal uh, for uh, improved signage and restricted parking on one side of the street. And uh, this particular ordinance amendment um, uh, can be drafted, sent to Morris Township for their uh, cooperation, uh, return to us, and I believe in the end we'll, uh, we'll address uh, some of our residents' stated concerns. Questions? Comments? Okay. Carmela, um, and then Pat. Bob, how uh, are you just going to use signage, or are you going to use... Um what, what are you going to use for the no parking? Because The, the serious the, problems occurred where the... Uh, roads uh, form a <coughs> right angle to the intersection, yep. Carmela. Mm -hmm. So we want to, within 100 feet of those particular intersection points, restrict parking on the inside of those curved radiuses, and that will absolutely improve uh, uh, access to larger vehicles uh, coming and going through the road. So we want to do yellow striping along the inside of that curve to make it patently clear to people that, uh, that uh, there's restricted parking there. We'll also do signage at the entrance to the development on both ends, both in Morris Township and in, and in Madison portion of Oak Court, so that uh, people are well aware of the, the regulations. Okay. okay. Pat? As I say, um, I think Bob and I went out there in the fall, and then I went back uh, later on with the chief, with Bob, and uh, I think Chief DeRosa was also there, because they had, and I believe earlier this evening, uh, Chad Ripka had handed these out. It was a serious issue. Um, it was really brought to light by some issues that the Board of Ed had with getting a bus through the neighborhood um, because of the way people were parking. Um, and with that, it was an issue that did need to be a more permanent solution. In the past, people kind of self-policed by only parking on one side of the street. But over time, that hasn't really held. So we need to do something more formal to ensure the safety of the residents in that area. Bob was just telling me earlier this evening he was out there recently with the ambulance and it was very challenging getting down the street with just a little bit of snow that's on the street. So it's important that we, we, we take some sort of action. The residents were hesitant. They did not want to see a lot of signs. They didn't want to lose a lot of parking. So I think what we've come up with is a compromise that, um, that Bob put together that will kind of balance the ability of the neighbors to kind of maintain their neighborhood, but at the same time ensure the level of safety that they need to have. 
Any other comments or? All right. So this ordinance is ordinance seven, which is listed for an introduction, and then we send a copy of it to Mar Morris Township. Is that? Thank okay. You. Thank you. All right. On to our 2015 budget. <clears throat> what we have, we'll start with staff presenting a little overview. I just want to share, um, you know, shortly we'll have some uh, departments coming up and uh, I lost my notes here. The guidelines I sent out to uh, council members and also to department heads. Mm, just had it. Uh -huh. Included for the department heads and making sure that their presentations were um, about three minutes and that they uh, covered uh, highlights of 2014 and also 2015 goals only as they relate to the budget. And thank you. And also that they uh, cover um, any spending cuts that have, uh, they've outlined in this budget to be specific on that. Um, also that they cover any new positions that have been already discussed as part of the budget and no surprises on new positions. I also asked, asked council members to try to any uh, questions that were not pertinent to discussions to get those answered ahead of time so we didn't uh, get bogged down on uh, things that we t could be taken care of offline. Uh, also um, at request the council talk about you know l larger ticket items as I put in the um, memo. We stay away from the um, out of the weeds and out of the paper clips that we really talk about significant num numbers that can make a difference. And then, um, and we got our last meeting, we did stray off a topic, and so I will do a better job as mayor to make sure that as we get in discussions that we actually stay on topic, and if there's something else that comes up, we can always save that for another meeting, but we are on the budget and not on, on other things. So that was shared. Ray and Jim? Yeah. Bob, you covered your comments, yeah. but yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Mayor, first of all, just a reminder of the upcoming hearings. Um, we have uh, the hearing this evening, which is the introduction to the budget. We're going to be talking about surplus. We're going to be talking about personnel um, and the budget and brief document that you have. And we'll be talking about the guidelines that Mike Soriano referenced. Um, this February 18th, 7 p.m., that's a Wednesday evening, we're going to have utility. Uh, Mike Piano will come and present, and then we'll discuss the utility budgets as well as the five-year capital plan. We'll take the capital one-year plan that we had at the last meeting, broaden it to a five-year capital plan, and refine it. Um, February 23rd, uh, we have scheduled open space discussion and then a wrap-up of the budget or a finalization of the budget. Um, that's on February 23rd at 8 p.m. at the regularly scheduled council meeting. And then March 9th, uh, we have the official state budget introduction. Robert, um, uh, hopefully at February 23rd, will be directed to craft the budget based on what the council decided on February 23rd, March 9th. The actual official budget document is brought in and introduced, and that, as per uh, Division of Local Government Services state guidelines, is appropriate time frame for us to um, uh, be within statutory <coughs> guidelines. Um, with that, um, we have Department of Presentations for Police, Fire, DPW, Engineering, and Health, and I believe the Chief of Police is here first to talk about the Police Department. Darren, you want to come right. on up? Come on up. Good evening, everyone. Big night tonight. Yes. A lot of smiling faces in my PD. You know, I want to personally thank you know, Mayor Conley, my council liaisons, uh, Ms. Bailey, uh, Mr. Catalanello, my past liaison, Ben Walkowitz, and the rest of the uh, Madison Council for your support and your commitment to my department and the safety of this community. Um, I know it was a big step tonight hiring five officers at once, but it, it just shows your commitment uh, once again to the safety of this community. It's a, it's a pleasure to be before you and present my uh, 2015 budget. Uh, as in past years, this budget is as lean as uh, feasibly possible uh, while ensuring the security uh, of the residents. During the past year, my staff and I have brainstormed on innovative ways to reduce costs and increase efficiency as much as possible. Some of the things that were implemented were an administrative fee for police vehicles. Uh, this fee uh, uh, is charged to contractors when officers are uh, hired uh, for their services. This fee has already uh, self-funded one police car in the 2014 budget and will once again uh, fund a police vehicle in the 2015 budget. 
we also have reconfigured lot three to maximize daily space. Uh, this has increased revenue by approximately $20,000 for the year. Uh, we have also instituted a summer permit program uh, when the lot usage is diminished during, summer, during the summertime. This has also increased revenue. We recently revitalized our neighborhood watch program. This will strengthen the police community bond and collaboratively make Madison a, a, a safer place to live. Uh, it'll make the patrol division a more efficient uh, means of policing Madison. I'm pleased to say that in the first week, we already have 30 residents that volunteered to become block captains. In 2014, I have also increased my Madison Auxiliary Unit by two officers. In 2015, I would like to do the same, uh, putting on another two officers. Volunteer officers are a vital asset to our department, uh, and they are vital in special events and storms. We have recently appointed one college intern who aspires to enter law enforcement. This young person is from our community and would be an asset to this agency in the future. Not only are we utilizing these interns to assist our department, we are also investing in a potential future Madison officer. In the past year, I have opened dialogue with surrounding agencies to share equipment and services. In 2014, we have entered into a shared service agreement with the Florham Park Police Department as well as the East Hanover Police Department for the shared service, uh, which is the emergency services unit. <coughs> We are currently negotiating with the Chatham Township Police Department to share our Madison booking and cell block facility. Both departments will be mandated by the state of New Jersey to replace our aging fingerprint system as well as our ALCO test machine. These, rep these replacements will be a significant cost to both towns uh, with this possibility of sharing uh, our booking facility. Instead of buying two machines, one for each town, we will be sharing the cost of one machine. Another area that is being explored is the possibility of sharing spare school guards. This will alleviate any need for police officers to stand on a school post if a school guard calls out sick, which also puts a strain on an already stressed patrol division. As you know, overtime has been a challenging issue due to reduced staff staffing levels. Uh, we have incorporated practices that reduce overtime as much as possible. I feel that with the five appointments tonight, we'll start to see a reduction in overtime once these officers are trained and uh, graduated from the FTO program, which should be about three months. I am also exploring the idea of a corporal position. This will reduce the need for the sergeant overtime. This position will ultimately uh, reduce sergeant overtime once implemented. Uh, sergeant overtime was in excess of $100,000 in 2014. 2015, I intend to hold a promotional exam to fill vacancies in the rank of lieutenant and sergeant. I also seek to fill the long vacant captain position, which will ease administrative responsibilities and more evenly distribute workload and ensure a distinct command as stipulated in our table of organization. I feel we need to invest in the infrastructure of this department with the future in mind. We must invest in our personnel who will one day take over the operation and command of this agency. My job as Chief Executive Officer to, be pre to prepare future leaders through succession planning, which needs to start sooner rather than later. Our agency has lost many ranking officers over the years, to, and with them went a, a wealth of knowledge and experience. Providing these promotions will be an investment in the future of this proud agency. The costs associated with this testing process is reflected in my budget. I also intend to hold a test for the position of patrolman in 2015 to establish a list of candidates for any future positions. This testing process has not been administered for decades, and I feel we have missed valuable opportunities to hire local candidates <coughs> only for the mere fact that it was cheaper and easier to hire someone that is already certified. I feel the testing process will afford us the best of both worlds and expand our candidate pool. 2015, there is an increase for part-time help, which includes per diem dispatchers. I plan on adding two additional per diem dispatchers to decrease overtime expenses in this category. Part of the increase in dispatcher overtime was the fact that a vacancy was created when one of our dispatchers was appointed to the position of patrol officer. Also being explored is the possibility of appointing a special class two officer for certain functions to be determined. My capital budget will consist of replacing one 2002 
Chevrolet Tahoe. Although this vehicle has only 55,000 miles on it, the frame has extensive corrosion and it has been recommended for replacement by Madison Borough Mechanics. Two other patrol vehicles will be replaced with 95,000 and 82,000 miles respectively. Please remember that these vehicles are utilized 24-7, 365 days a year. They idle for extended periods of time and are driven under harsh conditions. Theory suggests that the odometer reading on a police vehicle should be doubled or tripled to get a, a true representation of the mileage. Well, what this means is 100,000 miles on your personal vehicle is a lot different than 100,000 miles on a, a patrol vehicle. Two other items that are slated for replacement in my capital budget is our aging uh, and failing phone recording system and our digital fingerprint system, which I had mentioned earlier. Pay remedies are sought in the 2015 budget to equalize pay among certain dispatchers who are being compensated at a lower rate than newly hired personnel within the communications division. I would also seek to increase our school crossing guard pay, but would like to link it to attendance. I feel a modest pay increase of $1.50 to $2 an hour uh, would be comparative to surrounding communities and if linked to attendance would help our concerns. Once again, when a school guard calls out during inclement weather, if there are no other spare guards available, a police officer must man that post, putting even greater strain on the patrol division. This system, if put in place, would give the guards an incentive to keep unexcused absences to a minimum throughout the school year. School, school posts have already been adjusted to increase efficiency and to maximize cost savings without reducing safety. This ongoing evaluation process has created savings of approximately $25,000, which can be used for this incentive. In closing, I feel that a prudent budget is being presented and my staff and I will do whatever to ensure the efficient and effective manner of operation of the Madison Police Department. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments? Good overview. Um, great good. job. Thank you for, Thank yep. You, you hit those highlights and, yep. A little over three minutes though. You, you, I was going to say you were, you, were, you were a bit over budget with the time, but uh, we'll You're under budget with your yes. overtime. Okay. Chief DeRosa. Chief Well, good evening, and uh, tonight we're here to present our 2015 budget. I'm just going to start off with a, a few of the accomplishments from 2014 and then segue into the 2015 one. Um, some of our goals that we're, we're asked to achieve in, 20, in our calendar years, this is what we uh, were able to accomplish in uh, 2014. Uh, we continued the upgrade of our turnout gear. Um, in my capital budget, I have also uh, four sets budgeted for again this year. We're finding that buying four sets a year right now seems to be working with allowing me to give that to new prospective volunteer, new volunteers and also replace uh, aging equipment as well. Uh, the average lifespan is somewhere between seven and 10 years on a set of turnout gear at an average cost of around $2,700 per set. So it's not cheap, but uh, we do take care of it. We maintain it, we send it out and get it get repairs made along the line, but just sometimes the material gets so degraded, we have to uh, replace it. Uh, volunteer recruitment, um, it's always on my, uh, my goal list. Uh, we're always working for and trying to attract more and more volunteers. Our department being a combination department relies on the strength of both the career staff and the volunteer staff. Uh, we, we send out letters in the electric utility bills. We uh, advertise on our Facebook uh, site, our RoseNet website has it all the time. We also have the sign outside the fire department that says volunteers wanted uh, to attract more and more volunteers. So we're doing everything we can short of knocking on doors uh, to attract volunteers. We also work with the uh, high school to, uh, on career day to get young uh, students involved or get them intrigued with wanting to join. Um, grants, in 2014 we received a grant from uh, from FEMA for assistance to firefighter grant in the amount of uh, $132,000 for replacement 
of 48 or 24 SCBAs and 48 cylinders. Uh, this was actually, I think, budgeted for, I think, in my 2015 capital budget, so that was able to come out um, of that due, due to the grant that we, we got. Um, we actually did get, with when you start adding on all the extras that are needed on the SCBAs, we got $186,000 worth of equipment. When you take off our trading values, uh, discounts, uh, out of pocket for the citizens was approximately $24,000 uh, out of our pocket and the rest came out of the FEMA grant. So we did good and the life expectancy of the equipment is probably anywhere from 15 years to 20 years depending on how well we take care of it. So we're up to date on that. We replaced uh, one of our aged uh, pickup trucks which was from 2000 with a, with a new pickup truck. It was delivered in the fall and it's in service and we completed um, the rebuilding of Geraldine's motor. She's back in service. She was in the Christmas parade and she's ready to go for the parades down the road. In 2015, we're looking to uh, advance our training um, due to budget restraints over the years. Um, one of the areas of my budget that was cut or we held back on was training. Um, so we've actually asked to increase that this year, which was granted. Um, we're going to try and get to the fire academy more frequently in conjunction with mutual aid companies so that we don't have to strip uh, Madison of all its uh, resources when we do go up to the fire academy. We're going to work on trying to keep morale high by uh, doing different projects. Um, again, attract more volunteers, apply for more grants, continue our working relationship with the Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Uh, in 2010, um, we started a relationship with assisting and working for the ambulance squad um, in medical calls. When they were busy and tied up, we would fill the gap until, uh, until they could come or mutual aid can come. And it's a, it's a relationship that's working very well. And uh, to the Madison citizen, I think the medical services is, has brought, been brought up a couple notches and they don't see any difference in, in the quality of service, that's for sure. And uh, it's a good relationship. We're going to hopefully continue that uh, down the road. Um, and the other goal is to uh, hire a replacement firefighter in 2015 as well, which has been budgeted for and is already in the budget. The three uh, budget items I want to talk about just real quick are my, my budget set I'm responsible for. Um, the public safety complex, that we take care of that uh, budget. Uh, that's staying the same as last year's in 2014. Uh, no increases or decreases. Uh, we're going to hold the line on that. Um, in my operating, uh, in the fire department budget, um, I've got three sub accounts in that and as far as uh, motor vehicles go, uh, I've asked for an increase of $4,000 in, in that account, 2,000 in parts and accessories and one in um, just maintenance. Our fleet is, uh, is aging, our newest engine is a 2008, uh, we have no more warranties on equipment so as stuff starts to break it's going to start costing us more. And um, So I've asked for an incre increase in that. Uh, last year we did run out of money towards the end of November, mid-November in our maintenance budget, and we had to ask for additional funds to get us through the uh, some repairs in uh, November and December. Uh, in my operating budget, I've asked for an additional $2,000 in travel and training so that I can pay for schooling and um, additional courses so we can get up to the fire academy. In my personal account, personnel accounts, I've asked for uh, $10,000 and it's in the budget and additional overtime money to cover the expenses when we do training um, because I've got to backfill and bring people in off duty to do that. Um, and I've also budgeted or asked for and it's been budgeted for a replacement firefighter in 2015 as well. Through negotiations with the uh, FMBA and the recent contract that was signed, um, both sides agreed to lower the starting salary. So that was dropped by approximately $10,000 to a starting salary of $40,400 to aid in, in assisting with, with hiring uh, from the dollars and cents perspective. But the reality is we need help uh, during the day. Um, there are virtually no volunteers around, at least in Madison, during the daytime hours. Um, we average probably less than one per call. So the career staff kind of picks, picks up that slack during the daytime. Um, the firefighter that we're looking to hire would be a daytime firefighter Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, um, not performing standby duty or anything like that, um, would be a certified EMT as well, and would just be another pair of hands to help us uh, at the scene of an incident. We have responded to nearly 1,200 calls uh, in 2014, actually uh, 1,192, uh, with 65% of them or 769 of them being 
in that window of Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. So that seems to be our busiest time when the town is hustling and bustling and there's more volume of people and things going on. And with that, um, I tried to keep it down to three minutes. I hope I did. You felt some sense of when you might need to replace some of your larger equipment and what kind of price tag are we talking about? And then I have a, a second. Okay. The, um, to answer your question, um, the engines we try and what seems to be working is a 20-year active life, 10-year reserve. So every 10 years, we're purchasing a new engine. Um, we have a 98, a 2008, and a 1990. And the 1990 would be the one that would be going in 2018. Um, as far as uh, we have a rescue truck that's due somewhere between 2018 and 2020. It's a 1995. And when you, you look at the trucks, they say, wow, they look great. And they do. We do take pride in what we have. But as they get older, um, getting uh, replacement parts are harder because no one's stocking stuff for a 20-year vehicle anymore on the shelf. Either you've got to find it in a scrapyard or get it made, even though a lot of the manufacturers are still in business. So it makes it more challenging. The aerial truck is a 2008. has approximately a 25-year lifespan, so that's got a ways to go on that. And then the staff vehicles are anywhere between you know, eight years and 15 years, depending on the use and abuse they get. So and we, and, and we have them pretty well staggered out, mm -hmm. so we can, we can do that. Those are probably our biggest capital items. As far as cost, um, an engine's about, I'm going to put a number somewhere between 450 and 550. An aerial truck is going to be somewhere, probably knocking on by the time that gets to be replaced, maybe like a million four, somewhere around there. The last aerial, the one we just bought in 2008, was just under 900,000. So, so, coming up with that, and the rescue truck is probably going to be, I don't know, around 450 to 550 again in that window, depending on equipment. So, fine, thank you. The uh, the second question I had is um, regarding salaries and wages. If I, I I know you have an assumption in the budget that there'll be a mid-year uh, headcount addition, so that's half a year of a fireman. If I take that against the spread between um, what was appropriated last year and what's being appropriated this year, I, there's about close to $100,000. What is, can, you, can someone help me here on where that's coming from? Jim is, pull, Jim is pulling out the book here. And, uh, I have Robert step up to the podium too for that, to help us answer that question. You know, if need be, I mean, we can do this offline. I didn't, I thought it would be something you might have. More available. Go to the last budget page, please. Sours and wages. Mm -hmm. uh, Department 265, last page. Okay. Proper comparison. Column 5, original 2014 budget, 1,470,000. Right. 1,492,000. That is the apples to apples comparison. The, what's shown on this, the uh, summary page excludes the uh, fire. Captain's position as the uh, fire inspector. We have to budget that separately so it's not captured in that in this budget. Yeah, I'm not quite sure I'm following you. Why don't we do this? So some positions are split because the construction, co construction code, and so we're... Oh, I see. Okay. But that still doesn't that explain still doesn't, yeah. a 10 or 11 percent increase. I mean, if, unless we're changing the allocations between last year and this year. We are. Okay, so if you could write that up and send it to Ben, because I had the same question that Ben had. All right, so... <laughs> Good if, if I could respond to that, we, we are. I mean, the, the state of New Jersey, for the UCC code fees that are charged by our construction code, they monitor that. And the general rule of thumb is that you cannot generate a significant surplus above your true costs. We weren't reflecting our true costs of providing that service. For example, Chief DeRosa provides services to the construction code. A percentage of his salary is chargeable. We looked at that and adjusted that. Bruce Barrios, who's a fire inspector, we adjusted that and applied him. James Blair also his services. So three officers who were previously not adjusted at the rate uh, reflected in the 2014 budget are now reflected in the 2015 budget. So when the state reviews our fee schedule, we, they don't take a 
we don't take a haircut and have them unilaterally reduce our construction and permit fees. So that's why there was a change from 2014 to 2015. And, and we'll give you a separate memo on the officers and the change in the allocations. Thank you. So, so it would be helpful to have just something to, uh, before the next, or at some point to share that writ written yeah, down. We'll do it or, because I, I thought it was ex typically explained here, but couldn't, uh, couldn't okay. the numbers yeah. here couldn't aren't matching happen. up with the numbers that are on the salary. Yeah, so, okay. so we'll get something uh, yeah. to clarify that. Easy way to look at it is column 5 versus column 11. Yeah. It shows the small percentage no. increase. But we'll, we'll get a yep. clarifying memo on that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any? Uh, Rob? Thank, uh, thank you. So, you know, historically, I had always kind of resisted the concept of hiring a new fireman. Uh, when I sat down with, uh, with the chief and we went over some of the insurance data and the independent ranking, it became apparent that we needed to do something. So, um, you know, um, uh, I'm wondering why we would wait until the middle of the year to hire the fireman if, let's say, we had a... Uh, a qualified candidate prior to that, um, considering the low starting salaries, forty odd thousand dollars a year, if we found a good candidate, shouldn't we just move ahead? Um, I'm curious as to why we have it scheduled for a mid-year hire. I, I could just, I mean, it, it was just. It's just, a, yeah, I mean, it's uh, a governing body decision as to what point you want to. Um, hire the individual, so if you wanted to adjust it, that's in your province to do that. We'd have to obviously make an adjustment elsewhere in the budget to reflect an additional $20,000 of costs and health and pension. Well, yeah, I, I, I would think that if, if we could get a candidate who's uh, experienced, familiar with our department and all that, by chance, <laughs> or, or if someone comes along, we should, we should seriously uh, investigate it. But if we say we put, put the uh, budget to bed... Um, you know, on schedule and then list by the time they're on board, it's going to be fairly close, but we can, yeah. So the, well, the budget would be introduced in May. It would be adopted in, or in, in I'm sorry, in March, March. It would be adopted in April. We go through the hiring process at that point. So um, we can accelerate the hiring process. Uh, now, now I understand why. Right, but, but if something crazy happened and we, you know, found yeah. a diamond in the rough or something, we could, we could try and advance it. Correct, yep. Yeah. I mean, the flip uh, side is we already authorized the police department to go ahead without finalizing the budget. True. Yep. But the difference on the police was they were self-funded through retirements, so the, the net impact was less than 12000 over an yep. analyzed basis. Yeah, there, it's there, not a reflection on the chief. It's just th there is a different hiring process that we don't have. It's a more truncated process, but there's a priority for volunteers. So our, you know, once the budget is adopted, we won't have an extended advertising posting period the volunteers are the eligible per state law and the rule and regulation of the fire department. So there's going to be a very limited universe of potential candidates, and I believe the chief probably has identified those potential candidates so we can move very quickly. And, and, and without the academy requirement, there's, they're, there they're actually going to probably be on board sooner. One, one of the cool things when we are doing hiring in the fire department is the gentleman or woman that we hire um, has to come from the volunteer division. By, by state law, Title 40. So we've already evaluated these individuals or individuals, um, seen how they play in the sandbox, so to say, already. So we usually get a good good candidate. Sorry, Bob, I keep... Uh, That's okay. Go ahead. No, I have a question about the insurance data. How do we match up with our surrounding towns in regards to insurance? We are, I mean, the chief presented a report. There's an insurance rating agency that every approximately every four years or so monitors our water distribution, our facilities, our staffing, and other criteria, and assigns a rating of a scale of 1 to 10. We have maintained our ranking, although our score has been decreased from the last ranking to this ranking, but we are what's called, we're a tier 3 community, which is in the top, approximately top 15% of the states in terms of high performers. The towns around us, um, we polled after we got the result to see if we were a 3, what are our neighbors? And the first response that came back, which is, I shared it with the chief, was Chatham Borough is a three also. But they have a volunteer fire department, no paid personnel other than a part-time paid chief. We have a brand new firehouse that costs us $10 million. We probably have $5 million worth of fire equipment we just spent in the last five years. So I, I don't know how they come up with these rankings, and I think we have a superior fire department and a superior chief. So I thought our ranking would have been much higher. 
Um, probably so, the mutual aid from Madison that gives them the high well, right. I think right? that's probably what it is. <laughs> I mean, what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we're we're with our peers. If anything, we're higher than you know Morris Township is a four, uh, which is lower than us. We're we're a three. Chatham Borough is a three. Chatham Township is a three. Um, it, it it was an unusual diversity of, of spread of of, of of rankings, in, independent of whether you had a paid fire department or not, or a brand new firehouse or not, or a brand new aerial or pumpers didn't seem to make a difference. So I, it was hard to make sense of the report. That's what I'm hearing. So to me, the hiring should be based solely on, solely on need. And I think the need is there because, you know, I understand the chief's concern about volunteers. Trust me. I, I feel your pain with mm -hmm. that. Um, but the insurance issue, um, it doesn't hold water to me. It really doesn't. If we're being ranked the same with a good paid fire department as other towns, well, they're all volunteer. That doesn't make sense to me logically. It just doesn't cut it. But the thought being, after speaking with the chief, if we were to get the full staffing, we could rally back to a high three or a low two, which would have an effect. Yep. Well, yeah, so it's $40,000. Uh, the, the, the insurance rating the, would help, but I, I, as you just said, you know, you acknowledge it. Uh, regardless of what insurance says or what a number says or a book says, uh, we pull up at the scene of a fire, we're need looking bodies. for, we need bodies. Yeah. I, I don't know else how to say it. We need bodies. Working good bodies that understand what needs to be done. Um, mutual aid today is the norm. It is not the abnorm. I don't know if you saw me before I was over there texting and doing stuff. There was a plane coming in with no landing gear on his nose and mutual aid was going wild while all this was going on. So mutual aid is the norm um, today. We were just in Morristown the other night we were in Cedar Knolls and another one the other day, and they come to us when we need them. So um, it, is, it is the norm. Run cards and, and all that are, are the norm nowadays because everyone's in the same boat. No one's got bodies. Carmela? I got two really simple questions. Go ahead. Okay. I, I keep on looking at, at Captain Eddie Nunn, okay? And uh, the number of time spent is 100%. I, th to me, that doesn't make any sense because he's working in zoning with construction and, and whatever. Uh, I, I don't know why that still says 100%. I know he's kind of uh, paid out of different uh, departments or whatever, but just a little thing that bothers me. Okay. That's all. Well, I, you know, I, I, I just he's 100% in the clarified. fire department. He doesn't work in the zoning. I know that. Um, he assists us. He and went. He assists the Housing and Safety Committee as right. a field investigator upon release and the discretion of, of the chief. But his primary responsibility is to the fire department, I think, is okay. what the chief is. And, and within that, his fire prevention is pretty much his sole hat when, he, when he's there, um, governing that, that wing of the fire department for, okay. uh, you know, re-inspections of existing structures to make sure right. they stay fire safe. But, but not, right. not part of the permit process, so that's the difference that he... Yeah, he's nothing to right. do with the building department or anything like that. Okay. That's where Bruce and... Yeah. And that's what and Bruce is doing and, yeah. and, and, and Blair. Okay. Uh, the, other, the other question I had is you talked about um, an increase in your training um, because you felt that, um, you know, you, you should go to the academy. Are you including your volunteers in that training? Um, the volunteers are always included in the training. Um, when we train, we train as a group, as a unit. Um, there's no differential between the two. So, yes, they are 100% included. We go up, unfortunately, we have to go up in the evening, so that's where the overtime comes into play because I can't ask the volunteers to come in during the weekdays um, because they're working. So it's tough, and it's availability of the academy as well, too. So, But, yes, they are included. We're one department. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Chief. Well done. David Maines, Public Works. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm here to talk about the Public Works, and the, I have 11 budgets here in front of me that we, that Ray and I worked on in Jim and. We can fun for it, to start off. We can function with the budgets that they have already given me, if and that for uh, the eleven accounts, eleven different accounts I have. 
Okay, and then also too, in this year, I would like to try to replace three more men in the parks in the public works department as laborers. Why I'm asking that is for because I've had two retirees and a transfer where there's money still out in my salaries and wages for the hiring of three more laborers. Because that there, in regards for the water department, I want to put two men in there because they are they need men to be trained for when someone does retire. And so for, for that there. And also another man in the sewer department. So when uh, one guy is out, we have three men still in that department to keep the department functioning. But a three-man crew is not really working that great, not unless I do cross-training, which I am going to be doing this month where I have to do confined space training for the whole department. So if anybody's got to go into a hole, everybody be able to go down in there. Because now, right now I only have the water and the sewer that can go down to confined space. Nobody else can go until they have this training for, the, for going down in any of the holes or any of the lift stations. And uh, as for like this year, for, our, my, for what I would like to purchase out of my capital in that there, Jim worked up some figures in that. I do have one piece of equipment for the water department uh, for a skid steer. And then if I do have, to, have two men in this department, I would need a pickup truck, which is price. That's what's all with this study that's going on. We have a study that is going on right now for manpower and functions for the DPW, for the water, sewer, electric, uh, and mechanics and uh, parks. Then also, too, in the sewer department, <coughs> I, have a, I have a man there, but I'm also look, asking for money for uh, more pumps for this pump station. Bob and I have been working on putting in dry pit submersible pumps. We are doing away with the drive shafts because the insurance companies are saying the 20-foot drive shafts we had are uh, a dangerous. If the, the U-joints snap, it'll bust off there and could kill somebody going into there. That's why we're going with dry pit submersible pumps. And uh, between the money I'm getting last year and this year, we're going to put it out to bid to do the rest of the stations that have to have it done besides North Street, which is already have capital money put aside for that. Then under my 300 account, I have two pickup trucks that I, want, I would like to replace this year for, uh, for 120, one big truck. For 180, a uh, 16-foot cut lawnmower, and an asphalt hot box. It's a recycled machine for doing hot mix all year long. Even when it's cold, I take the recycled material, put it in the machine with a double burner, and it, we, can, we don't even have to go to the quarry as much. We can cut down on our quantity buying at the quarry <coughs> and use all of our millings and any okay. asphalt that we have stocked up in the yard. We only have to pay to get rid of it anymore, dump it. We'll be able to use it again. In the, like in this time of the year. Instead of using cold patch, this is a permanent fix instead of a temporary fix. And then in, uh, in the mechanics department, I am asking for a crimping machine, which not many people know what it is. This is for a machine that uh, does all of the hydraulic hoses for every vehicle we own, as fire trucks, uh, light trucks, my trucks, and sometimes the school comes down and they ask for us to fix some hoses for them too in regards to anything that has to do with hydraulic for loaders, pick, dump trucks, uh, bucket trucks, uh, anything you can think of for lawnmowers too. That's what this machine is used for. And the one we have now is outdated and we have to get a new machine. And that's gonna cost about $9,000. But this is all gonna be also discussed too during the cap capital review that uh, we were talking about today in regards for the capital for the equipment and for hopefully the men because I do have, like I said, the money is in my salaries and wages as we speak for when I have the two retirees and the one transfer. Jump in there, Mayor. So just to add a little color um, to that, we'll be coming back. We gave the uh, one-year capital plan at the last meeting. The next meeting on February 18th, David will attend that along with Bob Vogel, myself, um, and we're going to be um, bringing out the five-year plan. And as I mentioned at the last meeting, there's some minor adjustments. David's talked about them. The total dollar amount doesn't change. It's just the way he's allocating it and when things are – the some things he's pushing up and some things he's pushing back. So we've already had a conversation with his uh, council liaison, Pat Rowe, about this, um, and we'll talk more about it um, next, uh, next week when we talk about the five-year plan. Just some clarifications. The personnel that David has mentioned, there's there's no additional personnel reflected in the budget that's in the black binder in front of you. And what we were hoping to do is wait for the management study, which is currently underway, which I think we had talked about, and David's aware of this. They're not going to be back until probably after the budget adoption. That's why it's not reflected in there, because we don't know what their recommendation will be. The funds that David has talked about, he did have, you know, like Sal DiBiase and others who have retired at a high salary. Those funds at 
December 31st laps and go in appropriation reserve. They're, they're not available to reallocate for more salaries. So I, I just want to clarify, that's not sitting somewhere in a pot of money dedicated to DPW. It, it's fungible and it goes to the higher priority and whatever that is. And it could be DPW to go back to DPW, but that's a governing body decision. Um, and the last is in terms of, you know, we do have one employee in the store department who's currently out an extended period of time on a workers' compensation matter. We're negotiating with, and he's receiving his current full salary and benefits. We're negotiating with the workers' comp carrier to reimburse us that full salary. If we can negotiate that arrangement, what we had explored is that we would then hire using those funds for the period until that full-time employee comes back, either one or two people on a part-time basis without benefits to get the equivalent of a full-time equivalent. So the salary that we're getting reimbursed on a workers' comp would go to pay the salary of those interim workers. And then when the permanent employee comes back, we would end our relationship with the part-time employees, but we'd get a good experience. And the next time a full-time job comes up, they'd have on the job eight or nine months worth of experience. That's kind of what we're doing, but I just want to clarify that. And Ray both answered one of my questions and was filled in the rest of the things I was going to say, so. All right. Bob? You know, I understand, Dave, the, you know, the need for men. Trust me, I get it. Yes. I guess before I can really opine on it or, you know, give a valid opinion on it, I need to see the bottom line dollar impact on the budget. You know, which is where you talked about negotiating. Um, then they're not in the current budget right now, so I have to, I want to see the actual numbers. So I wasn't prepared for that tonight. Any other comments or questions for David? Thank you for not taking three minutes for each of the 11 departments. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned you have 16 budgets. You've learned you don't have One year we went line by line item by line item, and then yeah. it was a long dragged out yeah. thing. Yeah, we don't, yep. We've, we're getting pretty good at this system here. Bob Vogel. Great, great work from all ends. Bob Vogel? Bob Vogel? Bob Vogel, engineering, please. <clears throat> Yeah, I know. I know. Hello again. It's a little um, off for you. I'm reporting on land use services. Uh, land use services. Uh, are, we have uh, uh, six uh, budgets: engineering, planning, zoning, uh, historic preservation, the uh, environmental commission, and the building department. So uh, the building operations, planning, zoning, and engineering. Sure. All have uh, regulated uh, statutory uh, basis, uh, and we've operated that way for many, many years. Uh, the building department remains our revenue leader for last year. Um, they provide shared services to Chatham Borough. Uh, for last year, the uh, uh, number of permits that were processed through the building department were relatively the same as what they were in 2013. At 1,730 permits, the number of inspections that the building department processed was actually greater last year than any time in our history. So um, in 2014, we had 6,908 inspections that were completed and scheduled through the building department, and that uh, definitely uh, helped uh, as far as uh, the revenue picture was concerned. I think it's important to note as far as inspections, uh, in 2010, we averaged 3,094, and that was the average for the 10 years prior. So over, uh, oh, we've basically doubled the number of inspections to the building department that have uh, occurred with the acquisition of uh, Chatham Borough and uh, additional activity in Madison. So uh, they've been very successful um, and uh, really came through the recession uh, unscathed and continue to perform above and beyond in, in my opinion. So uh, terrific uh, kudos to Russ Brown and his group. Uh, total value of building construction for last year was $53 million and uh, that was down just $2 million from 2013. So uh, approximately level in terms of the total value of construction permits that uh, were, uh, and they were private construction permits that were uh, handled by the building department. Uh, for uh, 2015, the building department is interested in converting a scheduling uh, assistant from part-time to full-time, so that will have an impact, although a minor impact, on salary and wage. Uh, they need some updated software. They use spatial data logic software. Actually, our entire land use services division has access to that and uses it to varying degrees. Uh, it's very helpful for us because it integrates all our activities uh, with 
uh, applications, permits, <coughs> fees, revenues, to a GIS map of the entire town. And uh, now we have a GIS map of uh, Chatham brought into our system as well. And the updated software will allow us to seamlessly access both towns' uh, uh, operational data as well as GIS maps and uh, really makes our uh, field services and office services uh, pretty seamless. The other thing with the updated software that's being requested is a, is a web portal that residents from either town can actually dial into and find out permit statuses, uh, which I think is very valuable for us, only because uh, currently everyone and their uncle calls the building department looking for permit statuses all day, every day, day after day. And uh, uh, having to, being able to take a, offload a lot of those telephone calls, which are often redundant and needless, to a website, I think would really help us uh, in terms of productivity. So uh, very good uh, uh, proposal there. I think uh, we'd like to, to follow through with that. Uh, the last item, as far as the uh, building department uh, expenses were concerned, would be an upgrade of a vehicle. Uh, there's a vehicle sitting out there that's uh, 2002 with uh, 40 or 50,000 miles on it. Uh, similar to the police, there's idle time that you just don't see on the mileage, and so it's a bad indicator of how much actual use these uh, vehicles have been, have been uh, put through. So uh, those three things, uh, all fairly minor impacts uh, to, our, to our building budget and our divisional budget. Um, uh, the planning board uh, had a very quiet year last year. Only three applications were actually processed um, and, uh, and decided on. Uh, that's not characteristic for them. Normally we get a, a, better, uh, a better number of applications com uh, coming in, but uh, for those of you that sit on the planning board here at the governing body, I'm sure they know that that provides some time to do, actually do some master planning and some ordinance work and some other things to, to keep things moving. And so, um, you know, uh, the planning board is pretty quiet. The zoning board uh, uh, busy by comparison. Um, so. Uh, overall, uh, in, last year, uh, we had 46 decisions between planning and zoning boards, uh, $60,000 in revenue, $89,000 in escrow fees. Um, the zoning officers, Frank Russo and Dan Bacalou, processed 421 applications and decisions <coughs> and collected another $35,000 in revenues. Uh, development fees through the department and, uh, uh, were uh, $284,000. Uh, and those address uh, the sewer, the water, and the affordable housing obligations that, again, are statutory in nature, and we collect those fees in response to those. Um, last thing for the division is the engineering department, um, and the engineering department uh, basically advanced uh, over $2 million worth of uh, construction, public construction capital projects last year, and uh, obviously looks forward to doing that again in the coming year. Um, um, overall, uh, I don't think there's any line items that are really being re increased uh, by our division, any department, except for those three things in the building department that we had requested. So the, uh, the expense picture really hasn't changed much for any of us. And um, if there's any concerns about any of those line items or, or overall our, uh, our uh, application load or productivity or staffing, please uh, feel free. That's three minutes. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I have one question, which is more of a pet peeve question as opposed to, uh, I, there, I understand why police vehicles need to idle, <laughs> but I don't understand why an engineering department would even be legally allowed to uh, idle. So uh, maybe we could get more years out of a vehicle if we stop idling. <coughs> Oh, you might, except there's a, oftentimes that those blinkers uh, for, the, for the construction projects are on uh, all night long. And uh, they sit there and the blinkers don't go on, the strobes don't go on without the engine being on. And so that's why the engine's idle. So, um, yeah, uh, to a certain extent I agree, but there, there definitely is a fair amount of idle time on these municipal, municipal vehicles. So um, consider that. All right, thank you. Other uh, comments? with you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I think we, we could do a whole lot better across this uh, borough. Uh, any other comments or questions for Bob? Carmel? Bob, I, I just wondered about, um, uh, Russ does a fabulous job with Valerie and, and those girls over there uh, taking on um, Chatham. And um, 
How are they, uh, you know, I, I know that they've been okay as far as inspectors are concerned. Do you uh, see the need for something else, some more help? Actually, in that, I've, in I've that been, respect. We've been pretty proactive, Russ and I, in looking at uh, outside hired services mm -hmm. uh, and at least having access to additional people if and when we need them. Okay. Um, and so a lot of that comes into play, vacation times or things like that. And uh, I think we have a reasonable Rolodex at this stage of the game so that uh, hiring as a staff member probably is not necessary, Carmela. Okay. All right. uh, that's, that's you know, good. And I'm like that too with our department. I mean, if there's uh, an inordinate workload of a project that's coming up, I recommend to outsource it, you know. And so that's kind of how we're handling the entire department. And as you comment, I assume the, if we have the ability to check status of permits online, that will make a tremendous difference in the... Uh, well, if people to use it, it yeah. should make a great difference. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, the, the problem is, is have you been able to get all of Chatham's stuff online yet? We don't even have our own stuff online yet. So no. uh, this is a software upgrade that should happen through the year. I think what Carmela was referencing was the information that um, when we have an uh, Open Public Records Act request yeah. from Chatham, and we're still in a situation of having to go and backfill that data. Um, and we're fortunate that the staff can execute that in a timely fashion, but that right. does put pressure on the administrative staff. That's one of the reasons why we're looking to increase the administrative staff for one person um, that's currently part-time to full-time. So that's going to help, the increase the to what, a full-time? It's in the budget and it okay. will help. Pat? One question on the permit tracking. When, it, when there's a change in status, if I give you my email address, will the system notify me that there's been a change, or do I still have to go manually check myself? The system has the capability to do that. I want to implement that on a staff level before I implement it okay. on a wider applicant level. Okay. And so, uh, but the answer is yes, it's just going to take some time. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Lisa Gullen, Board of Health. Nice red. Yes. So first of all, Happy New Year to everyone I haven't seen thus far. And thank you, everyone, who wore red. Yes, I notice all the red. I think that's awesome. Uh, there's a little red in your tie. Okay, we'll let you um, get away with that. Um, so first thing um, I did want to do is um, introduce, we have a new president of the Board of Health. We have Dr. Bowen, who is here. And we do have one of our board members, Marianne McConnell, here. So I just wanted to recognize them. Um, Last year, we had a lot of uh, exciting opportunities come our way. We were um, asked to become part of a mentoring grant for Middlesex County Prevention is Key. And in that, we have uh, a woman that has come on as a consultant who is being mentored by that agency um, under a $35,000 grant that they've given to us um, to have her here part-time. And after about 20 months of service, um, they're going to help her write a grant that will look at um, actualizing $125,000 a year to us for five years. And that is specifically for substance abuse prevention and community coalition building, which we'll be doing with the Chathams. The other opportunity that we were given is uh, to work on strategic planning, workforce development, and quality improvement. We were received a mini grant um, last year, and we were also put into a cohort with other health departments in the state um, for what's called a gaining ground program. And they give you technical assistance also over a 20 month period and assist you with um, developing all these tools and these um, documents, which will be in the long run a huge, huge um, assistance to us. With that, in 2015, we have some um, exciting changes for some people. Um, we have three retirements this year. We have Christine Schessler, our health educator, who will be leaving us at the end of March. Uh, Marilyn Edwards, who is our registrar, is leaving me at the end of April. And Dr. Flo Rice, who is our nursing director, who is leaving me in the beginning of July, um, which is looking at which is looking at a 40% reduction of my staff um, in the next six months. 
Um, so we have been working with the Board of Health, our personnel committee, and the borough on uh, a transition plan and replacing uh, those staff members while also uh, increasing the infrastructure of the department. Uh, so you will see in your budget that we are asking for a temporary increase this year um, of $21,000 because we need to cover uh, salaries to bring in people while those retirees are um, working, wearing out their time, so to speak. And uh, so we have contractual obligations and obviously for good public health, we need to make sure we have an infrastructure that can handle um, any situation. In addition to that, we have uh, our one REHS who is on maternity leave right now as she just had a baby boy last week. Um, Tamika Trotman had a little baby boy, a bouncing baby boy of five pounds and change. So uh, we're wishing her well. But uh, so now we actually had a full 50% reduction of my staff, although people will be coming in and out as we go along throughout the year. Um, we do still have all our contracts with Chatham Borough, Chatham Township, and Springfield. We have uh, put in, last year we put in late at the end of the year, we had put in um, proposals to both Long Hill and Cranford. Uh, Long Hill, we ended up being probably one of the, I think we were the last one of two um, potential contract. Um, they did choose to stay with their current contract, so we did not get them. Um, and Cranford, we are still waiting to hear from. We're, they should be giving us an answer in the next month or so. Um, current activities that we've been working on have been including um, addressing the Ebola situation, which is still active. Uh, luckily, we have not had any active monitoring in any of our communities at this point in time, but there is still active monitoring going on. Um, one of the things we had done um, in the beginning of the, of the Ebola crisis was um, about five of us had become trainers in PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, and we began training other uh, community agencies on that. Um, not only do we do presentations here, as most of you know, we did presentations in Springfield, Chatham Borough, and uh, Chatham Township. And uh, most recently, Marlene Dolan, who's also here with me tonight, she and I had done a training for Drew University's medical staff on Ebola and the PPE equipment. We are all now, also now in the midst of monitoring for our measles outbreak, which I know our council liaison discussed a little bit with you. Um, one of the things we're doing to be proactive in that is not only are we monitoring what's going on in the state of New Jersey, as most of you know, we probably, we had our first case in northern Jersey. Um, however, we have been sending out emails to our preschools and our schools on um, different information regarding uh, their exemptions, because our nurses have just completed their audits of all the schools, so we know now um, what students have exemptions or do not have their MMR vaccines. Luckily, we are about 1% of our student population that do not have their MMR, which is low, um, but it still opens, always opens the potential for risk. So we have sent out information to anyone who may need to be monitoring this. We've given them some tally information um, in case a case comes by, we've given them some information on how to organize their exemptions so that if there was a situation, we immediately know what students need to be excluded from school and to um, address any issues with titers. And I think as far as my presentation, how's that for cleaning it up and picking up the time? Excellent. <laughs> past three, but you might have done the best, so we'll give you. <laughs> Questions, Pat? Um, yeah, one quick question and then one general comment. Um, you mentioned that your salary budget's going up by 21,000, but I, according to this, it's actually closer to 35. Is there a reason? It's the... Uh... And then I guess while you're looking that up, the, the general question I had asked when we met was, because of the number of people that we kind of have coming in and going out this year, I really did want to see kind of a, what did we start or end last year in terms of salary dollars for the entire borough and what do we expect that annual cost to be on December 31st of this year? Because I would like to know year over year how much are we actually increasing the the salary costs as we head into the next budget year. Because it gets to be tricky. If you add somebody in the middle of the year, you don't feel the full force of it until the following year. 
Question, R Rob? Thank you, and I apologize because I probably should know this, but what is the um, gross revenue generated by the uh, contracts? And what is the value of the Cranford contract that's still in, in question, if that's, if we can discuss? Our proposal to Cranford was $58,000. That hasn't been embraced. Uh, we were second finalist in yeah, no, Long Hill. And, uh, but the existing contracts you have, what's the, Adam what's the gross revenue? Springfield. Do you have that with you? Yes. Uh, this year's, um, actually I have, I have the anticipated 2015 number. For some reason my auto sum didn't come over for 2014. Um, but our anticipated for 2015 is $290,460, and that's based on um, agreed upon contracts. So that, that does been. not, that, that is, so Cranford would be a windfall. Thank you. Yes. And again, um, I'm not sure if I did say this when I was presenting, while we do have a temporary um, need for the increase in salaries to cover all the changes, the 2016 staffing proposal will actually be a reduction of salary and wage less than the 2014 salary and wage budget because of um, the retirees at a higher salary bringing in um, people at a starting salary. So we'll actually be looking at a reduction from 2014, not just 2015. Okay. That's, that's good to know. Thank you for sharing that. Any other questions? Yeah. Carmelo? Yes. Will the health educator <clears throat> be a part-time person? The way Christine is right now. Uh, what we're actually hoping to do is um, there is an increased need for the health education and promotion services. So for this year, um, we will hire somebody at uh, 15 hours a week through to um, Christine's final day here on the books. And then we'll be bringing in a health educator at 28 hours a week. And the staff transition proposal for 2016 is to also bring in a second person at 21 hours a week um, because... What we're, what's happening is that personal health services is drastically decreasing with the Affordable Care Act and the, um, the finding a medical home and Medicare and Medicaid. So uh, the need for personal health services and the federal restrictions on us are de decreasing the um, per public health or the personal health services that we've done in the past. Um, we're restricted, anyone who has insurance we are no longer allowed to see whatsoever. Um, so the only way we can see somebody is if their insurance doesn't cover a vaccine or a service. So with that though, the health promotion services and the health education services with the new um, push for more employee wellness programs and more in com communication out there, we're going to not fill the director's position, the nursing director. Um, and we're going to bring on two health educators, which will serve two purposes. It will get all of the information and the assistance out to the communities we need. And this other person will take over where our nursing director has now been really taking on more of our strategic planning process. So the second health educator will do that. And then we can continue to expand our promotional services. So they will be, both be part-time without um, any of the medical benefits um, provided in there. There's, an, uh, there's a serious challenge to the Affordable Care Act in the Supreme Court in June. Um, are we making any contingency plans in the case of, you know, the, uh, a ruling in favor of the plaintiffs, uh, which I guess would scrap? <coughs> I, I personally don't think it's going to happen, but uh, there's plenty of consultants that have been coming in telling us to prepare for it. One thing we are going to be work. doing in this situation, because we do still have services, we will be providing personal health services, A, because we're contractually obligated, and B, because um, we still see the need, uh, for example, the flu shots, okay? However, the flu shots have been dwindling because you can roll up to CVS and have it yeah. done at the window. Um, but what we have is we will have per diems, which will be at a much lower rate, that will help us with our clinics and with our... Um, this is in the case of it of repeal. Uh, either way, either way, we need we need. So, so there's no measurable effect on your budget in the case of repeal. There really isn't Thank at you. this point. Thank you. Any anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, okay Mayor. Now we're going to have uh, Robert come up to the podium and. Uh,
this is Robert's last budget. He's yes. said he's going to be retiring. We think he's going to be retiring at the end of the year, and I want to acknowledge that Robert, what he's done for the last number of decades for the borough. I also want to acknowledge Kim Kainz, who's in the audience. She's our new tax collector and chief accountant, and she's been uh, instrumental in helping us with the books and helping us craft this budget, and hopefully she'll be here for many years to come, continuing to help us with that once Robert uh, heads off uh, to retirement. So um, with that, uh, Mayor, we just want to open up with some general comments um, that Robert and Ray and I have um, on the budget. Boss, you want me to go first or do sure. you want to? Okay. So, um, you know, I, I mentioned this last year. We talk about this as a budget, but it's, it's much different than your home or business budget. Um, at home or business, if you get more money coming in, if you get a raise or business has more income, you can spend more money. Here you can't really do that. You have it, it, So this really is more of a spending plan. And uh, last year you might remember I talked about being conservative on line item budgeting and using the example of rock salt where we budget $100,000 as an example for rock salt. One year we may use $20,000, and the next year we may use $95,000, but we budget $100,000 because we, we need to have the rock salt. You can't not have it. So um, with this, this budget has um, no uh, change in services. Uh, garbage, all the other services that we provide are, are um, uh, the same as before. Uh, there's an excellent summary that Robert put together that's part of the budget documentation which will go online and which everyone has a copy of and which is available at the table there. Um, on pages 2A, 2, 2A and 2B it goes uh, summary line by line on some of the uh, reasons and uh, for the adjustments in the uh, budget and brief which is on page 1 of the uh, document that's been handed out. Um, Ray will go over some of the personnel changes. Um, and as you've heard this evening, some department heads want more staff, and, and Ray will go over which, which staff are included in this budget. Um, and uh, with that, Ray, do you want to? Sure, I can jump in. If you'll, if you'll look at line 11 on the, the first sheet, of, I think everyone in the audience has that, you'll, you'll see that we're proposing that a 0.75% increase over 2014 in total salaries and wages. And that reflects the fact that we're all, all employees through 1231 2017 are under contract. The contract obligation for all bargaining units for 2015 is a 2% raise. So this budget uh, meets that obligation for the 2% raise. It, it also meets the obligation for all, any increment, step increases, any other compensation in the, embedded in those contracts is met by the, the proposed budget. Uh, I would note that the, the, the total payroll that we're proposing for 2015, we've looked at a 10-year history. It's actually lower than the total payroll for the entire borough in 2008. So we've actually gone down from 2008 to the proposed salaries, uh, total salary and wages for 2015. On page three of the handout is the personnel assumptions that are embedded in the salary line. And independent of what the department heads were saying tonight, this is what is actually reflected in the black binder that you have within you. So in the police department, we're obviously replacing three retirees and two new hires. That's why we had five individuals appointed tonight. We're, we've added funding to give the chief the discretion, and he alluded to it during his comments for to supplement his patrol force with special police officers. These would be for special events, potentially school resource officers, unique things under the direction of the chief that we don't need a, a full-time, uh, fully benefit police officer, and we could supplement our force with these special police officers. We added a part-time records clerk. Part of our effort is to try to civilianize the police department so we don't have a uniform officer who, at a high salary that we would prefer to be out on patrol doing paperwork within the department during the daytime in the, in the office. We want them out on, the, on patrol. Uh, Can I, I, I just make a comment? Sure. Um, you, you see where you have add to, um, um, add funding for special police officers? Yes. Um, when the chief gave his presentation, he only talked mm -hmm. about one. Right. In, in the budget doc, you had two. There. There, there's funding for, there's $25,000 in the budget for special police officers. Right. It's an hourly wage. Looking at other communities, uh, depending on how the chief you, elects to utilize this, <coughs> that, that line item, we believe there's adequate funding for two, up to two special police officers. Most towns use them for seasonal events, like shore towns use them during the summer when the crowds come in. We have, you know, Bottle Hill Day, we have May Day, we have special events, the Christmas parade, things where we could supplement our force in addition to the volunteers and the auxiliary who do an incredible job. But also they could do things that the police department cannot get to go do. For example, one would be the school resource officer potentially to be considered for this position. Uh, they have the legal ability to serve warrants. We currently, that's a difficult challenge for us in terms of 
the patrol division and also doing that, picking up prisoners from the county or transporting prisoners, and if and when the, the sheriff decides to stop custodial transfer of prisoners, we'd need people to run prisoners back and forth. Those type of activities could be handled, we think, by a special police officer. So you think that 25,000 is enough for two? We believe it's enough for two, if, depending on how the chief chooses to, when he chooses to hire and what he assigns the functions to and them. Again, yes. that, that's based on a partial year, correct? And it's a partial year funding. Right. Well, by the time we adopt the budget and the, the chief advertised posts and hires were April, May. Uh, we've increased, as the chief alluded to, we've been proposing to increase the compensation for crossing guards predicated on attendance and punctuality. The chief alluded to, again, a promotional examination opportunity. We, Lieutenant Lamb retired. The, we have a promotional ordinance that's in force and effect. We'd have to, the governing body will probably have to revisit that in terms of, I believe there's criteria embedded in that ordinance that we probably do not have eligible candidates for either the sergeant position, because we have a young department, or the lieutenant's position, because we have minimum years of service I included in our ordinance, and I don't think we have any candidate to meet that current educational or experience requirement. Uh, but there is funding in the budget, be so the goal would be is to promote a sergeant to lieutenant and then backfill the sergeant position with patrolmen and hire a patrolman on the bottom. So we'd maintain the full staffing and establish new leadership in the department under the chief. The chief indicated about the funding for BDM dispatchers. We want to get uniform officers off the desk, civilianize that function uh, where possible. So we've increased that funding to, from 20000 to 30000 hopefully address overtime. And we heard the chief loud and clear. He said if he got more officers that it, once they're through their training period, the three-month training period, he intended to reduce overtime and the shift supervisor's uh, uh, funds going to the sergeant by a corporal position. So we're re proposing to reduce the overtime budget by $40,000 in recognition that he has additional staffing. We have a, uh, a mid-year firefighter. I heard uh, Rob indicate that we should look to try to accelerate that if possible, and we'll try to take that seriously. Construction code, we're converting a part-time um, office assistant, and we're proposing to uh, convert her to full-time with benefits. She was here before. She's excellent. She's handling the, the huge part of the Chatham contract that's generating $200,000 a year. She left us before because we weren't able to give her full-time work and benefits. We'd like to extend that, keep her, and grow that franchise. And Bob talked about the volume that's in that office. So we have to put the resources there to generate the revenue and service our contract obligations. Uh, we're changing the salary allocations. We'll get you a memo out tomorrow talking about how we're moving the salaries around to reflect in our fee schedule to justify our fee schedule to the state of New Jersey. Lisa just talked about the three retirements at the Board of Health. Financial administration, Robert's probably going to talk about. He's, in addition to Alan and Elise, our payroll uh, master leaving. Uh, we need to replace that, backfill the position with uh, another candidate. And then Robert, as CFO, we want to have a transition. He's retiring this year have people so he can transfer all that years of knowledge and where he hides all the money uh, and the passwords and uh, to, to the new incumbent. Um, and so we need to have that. Um, and, and those are the basic personal assumptions embedded in the budget. We hear Pat, he wants to see if you're hiring somebody part-time during the year and you're going to have that person on January 1st next year for a full year, what's the true cost of that? We'll, we'll put a document together to reflect that and try to also reflect projected retirements because there'll be an ebb and a flow, people coming and people leaving. Any questions on so what that's just the salary and wage overview. Just Robert, did you have something you wanted to? Did you want to add something to that? Just, uh, quick uh, crossing guards, assuming on a new school year, is that what the or? or well, the goal, the goal would be uh, there's a model that the chief was interested in, New Providence, which ties the compensation to attendance and punctuality, and we think it's attractive because. We have great crossing guards, but when the weather gets cold, sometimes they're less enthusiastic about coming out, and that requires a police officer to be on that post, and that we, we can't afford that, so we want to put the little carrot and the stick out there. So the chief, we, we hope to have it at the February 23rd meeting. So, so sooner. Okay. Oh, soon, as, as soon as the budget's adopted, we could roll that in, and if the governing body is willing, we would be suggesting and recommending that it be retroactive to January 1st because we gave a commitment to the guards that we would address their compensation fairly and I think a fair approach would be whatever decision you make, make it retroactive to January 1st and there's funding in the budget for the magnitude of what the chief mentioned. We could afford that retroactive to January okay. 1st so the guards wouldn't lose any, any time. Robert, anything? The, uh Main reasons why the increase in salary and wages is only three quarters of one percent. In the police department, 
there were three large payments to officers, Minnie, Carpenter, and Keemer for about 240000 They were in the 14, 2014 budget. They're out. Uh, that's been replaced by one uh, of 86000 for uh, Mr. Lamb and uh, Chris Keller. In addition, the overtime was reduced from 260000 to, to 220. So the net decrease, even though we're adding, suggesting to add positions to the police department, the net decrease is 85000 In public works, there was a retirement. That person was at 86000 replaced with a laborer for 32000 savings of 54000 Another Another employee transferred out to the electric utility was at around 60000 replaced with a $32,000 laborer salary. And snow removal over time, we uh, cut back from 220 to 160. That resulted in a, in a decrease of 111,000, 2014 and 2015. Those are the uh, two departments that are allowing this three quarters of 1% to occur. Impressive number to have. I was going to say maybe you could work your way right down through the appropriations, the health insurance. Sure. Maybe talk about that a little bit because the, the health insurance, July 1 of 2014, kicked in year four, which is the highest percentage contributions of the premiums. So we will have all of 2015 uh, to reduce the, the net premiums. And then during 2014, uh, Eight or nine uh, employees opted out, and that, that was not planned whatsoever. So we can go backwards with, with that. Um, and with the, in 2006, it, beginning in 2016, the fire department will begin contributing more as well. The pension social security numbers, uh, the pension numbers, uh, police and fire went up 4.2 percent. Uh, public employees went up 3.1. The, in departmental operating expenses, you see an increase of $85,000. That's primarily uh, construction code of 41,000, police 26,000, public works about 16,000, and vehicle maintenance around $13,000. Capital improvement fund, we are uh, recommending uh, to reduce that from three and a half to three million. And in debt service, the decrease is just $22,000. The net savings on the bond refunding was $133,000. And, and to calculate that number, you had to look at three different debt schedules. You had to calculate the, the gross debt of the non-refunded debt. Then you had to look at the interest expense on the refunded debt. And then you had to compare that with the original debt service schedule. So that was a reduction of 133000 The non-refunded debt, the principal payment went from $1,160,000 $1, to $1,210,000, which was an increase of 50000 which ate into the 133000 savings. And then beginning in 2015, in August, we'll make the first payments on the new New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Loan. So that's, uh, that also reduces the savings. Um, <clears throat> there will also be another $50,000 increase in the non-refunded debt portion in 2016. We have essentially one, two, nine different pieces of bonded debt. We have uh, two older Infrastructure loans of 88,000, one of which is interest bearing, the other is non interest bearing. We have two $400,000 infrastructure loans, one is interest bearing, one is non interest bearing. We have a $545,000 infrastructure loan that is interest bearing, a $1,545,000 infrastructure loan that is non interest bearing, and then we have the two pieces of the of the uh, existing debt that we refunded, we have a $5,150,000 piece of non-refunded debt, $14,610,000 of refunded debt, and the gross uh, $4,150,000 that, 
that was issued in August of 13 for the turf and the MRC, and a note of 1,685,000. I thought the um, the debt service for the the turf field and the uh, purchase of the property was not included in this debt service line. That is correct. Okay. It is not. All right. It's not in that number. I'm just reporting. I have to report that. The uh, the joint meeting is up. Uh, 10%, we're, we're recognizing our 65% share, and I've been instructed uh, from Mr. Cody to include about an additional 8,000 if, in fact, uh, any true up costs are, are necessary. The library number of uh, 1,379,000, the minimum payment, uh, this comes right from the Division of Local Government Services, they, they tell us that number, that's $1,269,000. That's up from last year, and that's up because the uh, assessed valuation increased, so the equalized valuation also increases. And then we add $110,000 to that. The reserve for tax appeals, we're recommending to go to zero. Uh, Ray alluded to that earlier. We have, uh, as of 12-31-14, there was $563,000 in, in, the, in the reserves. We feel uh, very comfortable with those numbers, and so does Matt O'Donnell. And then lastly, we're recommending to increase the reserve fund collected taxes to, set, to stay uh, consistent with the new, new budget guidelines. And to just talk a little bit about the reserve fund collected tax like we did last year, um, you know, anybody watching TV might want to know what it is. Um, uh, it's probably best to talk about it as an example. I'll just use some illustrative numbers. We collect approximately 55 million last year that we need to collect for the county, for the Board of Education, and for the borough of Madison, just using this as an illustrative example. So it's not just a municipal borough tax that we have to collect, we have to collect for everything. Do we send out bills of 55 million? No, we don't do that because we're not gonna collect all that money. So the reserve fund collected tax is the additional amount in billing. So we would, we would issue <coughs> bills for not 55 million, but 56.6, .6, that 1.6 million, or in this instance, 1.632 million um, is added on as a reserve because we know we're not gonna collect full amount. Um, any given year, the tax collection rate can go from 90, the high 98 percent to the um, middle to high 99 percent. Um, but uh, that rate varies every year. The 1.6 million has been mentioned last year and is mentioned in the past is, is a very modest cushion on a $55 million total budget. Um, other towns have a much larger reserve for uncollected tax. They do it for two reasons. They have poor collection or they do it um, as a strategy for surplus. Um, the reserve is not a spending line. It's not a line item that we can go and say we're gonna buy more shovels or we're gonna pave a road with it. If we don't use it, it immediately falls to surplus. And um, going back to that example, if we had 55 million that we needed, we issued 56.6 .6 million in bills, Let's say uh, Kim was successful and she collected 55.8 uh, million in those. There's $800,000 um, in uh, additional uh, surplus that would fall um, to, because it's, we needed 55, 000, 55 million and she collected 55.8 million. The additional 800,000 would fall right to surplus. And if you look at page six on the uh, handout, you'll see in the lower section, what generates surplus? And we'll talk more about this in a little bit, but line <coughs> number nine is excess of tax collections generated from reserve for uncollected tax and added and omitted assessments. The first portion of it, excess of tax collections generated, that is um, where that excess money for the reserve for uncollected tax is coming. And we'll talk about the sustainability of surplus and the need for continually having a sustainable surplus and what generates surplus in a little bit, but I just wanted to tie that back in real quick. A little bit tonight or a little bit the next meeting? Going? What's that? No, we'll, 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 we're going to be done real quick. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have me worried, Jeff. I'm going, whoa. We need a break. Pat? Because on that point, I mean, one of the budget guidelines that we were given was the surplus at the end of the calendar year should be in the 20 to 25 percent range of total appropriations for the coming year. I think this year we're up to 27 percent. And so I'd really look forward to one of the other final recommendations was a both a five-year history but also a kind of a three to five-year look ahead on how our surplus is going to be performing given the different pieces that are, are the components of it. You know, how many of them are sustainable, how many of them are one time. Um, because one of the things that does drive the surplus is how much money we collect on that one line item. And, and so the question is, if we think it's still going up, we sh might not want to increase it. But if, on the other hand, if we think it's going to flatten out or even start to go down, 
then it would be prudent to raise it by a small percentage. Something you guys are looking at, or? We, we have certainly looked at it historically, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about whether we're still in the right range or not, and the okay. general conclusion is we are. In terms so, of? In terms of how much surplus you should hold back relative to the size of your budget. Okay. Um, so right now we're, you know, being over it is kind of a high class problem. No, I understand that. But on the other hand, having too much money is money we've collected from taxpayers no, that's I, just sitting I, in the I, bank right. earning very little money. And it's kind of like we got a permanent loan from a lot of people. Well, let's see, the interesting thing here is the notion would be that anything over 25 percent will go to capital. Mm -hmm. But if you did, if you did that, then what you'd end up doing is actually allocating more municipal surplus than you generated in the prior year. We have to be careful so about that, you, yeah. yeah. So, so between the two, we'd rather go up a little more okay. rather than eat up too much surplus. Because when I looked at the guidelines, there were about three where we were kind of out of variance with what was recommended, and I think four Correct. we were in. And, and then again, one of the other... Suggesting, and we did talk about it, we'll look to do it maybe the next year or the year after. Yeah, there is an aspirational aspect to so many. Well, obviously, you can't get everywhere in one year, and exactly. but you want to look at what is the trend, and that was the one place where the trend was actually going. Yep, we actually went out of favor this year, and you want yep. us kind of like kind of roll that over and then bring it back into the range and yep. find a way to hold it. There. Yep. One thing I don't want to take us off too long. One thing I'd recommend is you go back and look prior to 2007 when we had the beginning of the electrical contract that's caused us some issues. And if you go prior to that, I think you'll see the percentage is mm -hmm. more or less the same. Yeah. Or at least it's in the same. Thank you. Any other comments on that section? <clears throat> All right. Oh, one, one other quick comment. I gave this to, to, um, to Jim, but one of the calculations that's in the, the guidelines does require us in my opinion, to break out the money that's coming out of the water utility and surplus into the operating budget. Because currently it's, it's included in municipal sources, net. And one of the challenges I was trying to, I had when I was trying to do the calculation was I didn't realize that that was buried in there until I couldn't make the two match up. And then I looked around and I finally realized that was what was missing. So I would recommend that going forward we break that line out so you can yep. see it. Yep. Thank you. So we're on to um, revenue side. Revenues, yeah. just wanted so you can deliver the revenues part fairly quickly, or do we want to hold yeah. off on that until two Wednesday, minutes, next Wednesday? Quick, two, two minutes. minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> Are the real three minutes, or the department had three minutes? <laughs> Not the health department three minutes. Okay. Maybe the police department three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, municipal sources. What is it? It's license, cell tower leases, joint court fees, parking fees, interest income tax, exempt sewers. Uh, sewer fees, sewer collection fees, revenue from shared service contracts like health, tax assessor, and construction services. That's line, line number two on the budget and brief under revenue. Um, there's typically a lot of fluctuation in those, but uh, we look to have a sustainable um, amount in that. Last year, Carmel asked an excellent question, which is do we, were we recognizing the Chatham Construction Code revenue that we were going to be getting, which was new to 2014. The answer is we were not going to anticipate it last year because the state frowns upon us anticipating revenue we've never received before. So, um, But this year, um, as Robert noted in his comments, we are collecting um, or recognizing a portion of the Chatham Construction Code revenue. So it's important to note that uh, there are two new revenues that we are going to recognize in the amount of one hundred sixty thousand dollars eighty five thousand from technology services and six seventy five thousand from the KRE developers agreement payment of twelve thousand five hundred per month so if you look at municipal sources that's why we're seeing such a good increase in municipal sources um, general capital fund balance um, and the reduction in sale of property that is uh, proof that we're actually moving to a sustainable budget where we don't have to use what we would call those as being one-off revenue sources um, we're happy to see this being a sustainable budget we can talk more about that later um, and uh, electric utility surplus Ray you want to talk about that real briefly uh, line five and six on the front sheet of the schedule yeah, last year we used 5.7 million dollars <coughs> this year we're proposing to use 6.2 million I would note Last year, we only had six months of the, the new contracts that Jim did a great job negotiating for us. This year, we'll have a full year experience. We believe this is a very reasonable escalation of the use of the uh, electric surplus, and we anticipate that will generate more than we're currently, um, that we generated in 2014, in 2015. 
Uh, this will be discussed in greater detail when we have the full rollout of the electric and water utility discussion. Then we'll have Mike Piano here and we'll go through a whole discussion on where we're heading on rates. We would note that consumption from 2013 to 2014 is down about 6%. And our revenue is off about $700,000 in receipts from 2013 to 2014, in part because of uh, the, the Pfizer property is still vacant up at Geralda. And we hope to get some tenants back into that building. And we'll have other properties coming online. And also some of our newer properties, like Rheology, is much more energy efficient and use way less energy than Verizon did when it was a switching station. Um, they're, you know, LEED certified, and so consumption is down a little bit, and we're also encouraging conservation through and solar. So we're kind of sending a missed message. We're trying to sell a product and at the same time saying use less of our product, but it's a, it's a good message to send. Um, uh, but, but that's kind of where we are in, in a, a snapshot. But on the 18th, we'll have a full-blown presentation on where we're going on rates and where, where we think we should be going and hear your thoughts and try to come up with a, a consensus. Robert you, want, Robert, you want to talk real briefly about municipal surplus? The municipal surplus? Yes, please. We, we're recommending to transfer $3.9 million. We generated $4 million and that meets two guidelines, one set by the Strategic Budget Committee as well as uh, the recommendation from Standard & Poor's. So, uh, Mayor, in light of the time, we can talk more about the surplus generation and um, how surplus works and the generation of it, which is page six. We can talk about that maybe at the next yep, budget meeting, if not on the 23rd. And also, um, we can talk a little more about the guidelines that Pat br uh, briefly alluded to in terms of how we're performing against them. It's in the documents here, um, and, and I fully support um, uh, Mr. Landergan and, and Mr. Rowe's position that, and Mr. Wolkowitz's position that we're moving towards these and we're going to be kind of looking at these and seeing how this budget fits in and we might be adjusting and talking to Mr. Bittinger about adjusting those guidelines. And that's, we, as we talked as the different committees uh, presented was we haven't even accepted these guidelines. So it's a good little process right now to see how right. this budget process holds up with what is recommended and this body can then... Um, talk about, yeah, we need to tweak, tweak number two, for example, or we're going to add here to all of them, whatever it might be. That's it. Wrap up 30 seconds on. Just, just to reinforce, the, so what we're suggesting is a, a, a modest tax increase of 1.5%. When you factor in the increased values and the assessment, that's a 0.72% increase. If we want to put in perspective, the average house in Madison we ran some numbers is now the average house, which is kind of mind blowing, is $670,828, the average assessed property. If you take our total portfolio divided by the number of housing units, it's $670,000. Our, this proposal, which represents 24% of the actual tax bill that people get, comes out to $33.61 increase, which is less than 10 cents a day. So for a $670,000 home, for additional 10 cents a day to get five more policemen, another fireman, and all services, we think it's pretty good. Well done. Okay. Any other questions or comments? So again, uh, more to come. Uh, our, we'll be here next Wednesday at a seven o'clock start. And uh, Robert, you are going into retirement with a leaving us with a great process and great shape. And uh, while we're wearing red, it's great to see our CFO in black. <laughs> <laughs> I want everyone to symbolism. Yes, I <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right, well, on that one. Okay. We're done. have to finish the counseling. I thought you were moving Rest to adjourn. No, no was, I'm not moving that fast. I'm just moving, moving on from the... Uh, thank you for... Some, sometimes I might do that. Welcome back, John. All right, we have no ordinances for hearing since we had a short uh, turnaround since the last meeting. This is now on the second of two uh, invitations for a discussion. Anyone in the audience may come up and comment on anything. Again, keep your comments to three minutes or less. State your name, your address, and write the same on the clipboard. Anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting, and we move on to introduction of ordinances. Ask, ask the clerk to read the statement. Okay, the ordinance scheduled for first reading has a hearing date set for February the 23rd, 2015. It will be posted in the Madison Eagle. Uh, 
published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 7, 2015, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 185-29 of the Borough Code, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, to prohibit parking on Co Oak Court. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 7-2015. I second. Any further council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. <coughs> All right. Consent agenda resolutions. Clerk, please read the statement. Uh, consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move consent agenda resolutions R67 through R75. A second. Any council discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello? Uh, yes, on all except R70-2015, on which I abstain. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. We have public safety, $16,393.11. Health and public assistance, $709.32. Public works and engineering, $295,337.59. Community affairs, $1,123.52. Finance and borough clerk, $5,626,335.01. And utilities, $618,500. $358,024. The total is $6,558,256.79. May I move approval of the vouchers? Second it. Do I have any discussion? Roll call a vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Under new business, I'd like to make the following appointment, requesting council confirmation to library trustees Mary Beth Hansbury of 13 Rolling Hills Court for a five-year term through December 31st, 2019. Move it. I'll second it. Roll call vote. Mr. Calamello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I move that we adjourn for the evening. Hi. Thank you. How are we going to make Mike's thing about six million dollars for electric and water? Yeah, we're going to have to talk about so much stuff in the night. It's on my list. Okay. It's not yeah. obvious, is it? Ooh. But we're going to have to talk about it. Yeah, I am so miserable. The chair is going to come back.